Okay, so you wanted to really get into the story behind the Taiwanese horror film Incantation, right? Yeah, a lot of people have been asking about the true events that inspired the movie. So we're doing a deep dive into this YouTube video essay from Rotten Mango that breaks down the whole thing. It's pretty wild, not your typical ghost story. Not at all. It really makes you question what's real and what's belief, you know? Absolutely. The video focuses on this family, the Wu family, in Taiwan back in 2005. Just a regular family, parents, adult kids living their lives. Until things get really strange. Yeah, and the video starts with these like subtle signs that something is off. Like little things at first. The youngest daughter, Sister C, comes home from college for winter break and starts having these incredibly vivid nightmares. But they aren't just any nightmare. No, they all center around this deity in Taiwanese culture, the Third Prince. Can you tell us a bit more about him? Sure. The Third Prince is a significant figure in their folklore, often seen as a protector of children and families. So already, not someone you'd expect to be showing up in nightmares. Right, almost like a spiritual alarm bell going off. And it starts to really mess with Sister C. The video says she's having migraines, can't sleep, and her family actually believes her soul is leaving her body because of these dreams. And that's where the cultural context is so important. The whole idea of soul loss is taken very seriously in Taiwanese culture. It's not some abstract concept. It's a real phenomenon with very real consequences for them. So they're freaking out, obviously. They're deeply religious and take her to a temple for a soul calling ritual, which seems to help, at least for a little while. But then it happens again. Another vision of the third prince. This time with a warning. He tells Sister C that her older sister, Sister A, who's living in Taipei, is in danger, like serious danger. Imagine getting that kind of message from a deity in a dream. Intense. The video says their mother immediately drives to Taipei to get Sister A and bring her back home. Talk about a protective parent. Right. But here's where it gets even weirder. Because at first, Sister A seems totally fine. Yeah, she's not acting strange or anything when she gets back. But then she has this incredibly vivid nightmare of her own. What happens in the dream? She's attacked and ends up killing a man. Oh, wow. And again, this is where understanding the cultural lens is crucial. Dreams aren't just dreams in their culture. They're seen as messages, prophecies, something to be deciphered. So this nightmare really shakes them up. And right after that, Sister A starts having these physical reactions, like slapping herself and getting spooked really easily. And the family blames it on the fact that they recently moved the third prince statue in their house. Like they disturbed his space and now something bad is happening. Exactly. It's like that classic core movie trope of messing with something sacred and inviting something evil in. Hmm. But for the Woos, this wasn't a movie. It was their reality. Okay, so now they're dealing with some kind of malevolent presence in their home. What happens next? Well, they take Sister A to a temple for cleansing, and it seems to help temporarily. Uh. But then her personality does a complete 180. What do you mean? She starts claiming that she is the goddess of mercy. Wait, the goddess of mercy? Isn't she supposed to be a good deity? She is. She represents compassion and protection. But... Sister A's behavior is anything but compassionate at this point. What's she doing? The video describes her as being incredibly volatile. She's banging her head against walls, scratching her own face. They even have to tie her up because she gets so strong. That's terrifying. What do they do? They decide they need to take her to the Five Finger Mountain for a month-long spiritual retreat along with her sisters. They think that's the only way to help her. I'm guessing this isn't your average mountain getaway. No, not at all. In Taiwanese folklore, mountains are considered to be very spiritually potent places, home to both good and evil entities. It's where they believe they can access powerful spiritual help. Okay, so the three sisters head off to this mountain for a month of intense meditation and spiritual cleansing. What could go wrong, right? That's what we'll find out in part two of this deep dive. And let me tell you, things that the Wu residents don't exactly improve while the sisters are away. So the sisters are off on this intense retreat, right? Trying to get cleansed, yeah. And the video shifts back to the parents and the son who are still at the house. Trying to hold down the fort, I guess. Well, they decide to call in a spiritual master to cleanse the house itself. Makes sense. I mean, after everything that's happened, that place probably needs a spiritual deep clean. You would think so. <laughs> And get this, as soon as this master steps inside, he's like, nope, something's really wrong here. What? What does he say? He actually claims to see a fox spirit guarding the front door. Ah, uh, no. Even I know enough about 
folklore to know that's not a good sign. Those fox spirits are trouble. Aren't they supposed to be bad omens? Big time. In Taiwanese culture, they're like tricksters, you know. Harbingers <laughs> of chaos, energy vampires, definitely not who you want hanging around your house. So creepy. But it gets worse, right? It's not just the fox spirit. Oh, yeah, it gets way worse. Like how the master basically tells them their house is like a magnet for negative energy. Okay, why? What's going on with their house? So the video explains that their house is located at a T-junction. And in Taiwanese culture, that's a big deal. It's believed to disrupt the flow of energy, creating something called a poison arrow effect. Poison arrow? That doesn't sound good at all. It's not. Basically, it's like a constant stream of negative energy aimed right at their house, like their spiritual immune system was seriously compromised. Making them even more vulnerable to this stuff. Exactly. And he's not messing around. Yeah. The master tells them straight up, living there long term is only going to drain them and make them more susceptible to these problems. Intense. So does he like perform an exorcism on the house? He does, yeah. A multi-day exorcism. Yeah. The video says he's chanting, burning incense, the whole nine yards. Wow. And does it work? He says the house is cleansed, but he warns them it's going to take a lot of effort to keep it that way. Like, they have to be really careful going forward. So, at this point, the family is probably thinking, great, things can finally go back to normal, right? What happens when the sisters return from the mountain? You would think, right. Yeah. So the sisters come back, they seem fine, the house is cleansed, everyone's hopeful. Okay. But then, one night, all three sisters just completely snap. Snap? What do you mean? What does that even look like? They start chanting, claiming that they need to return home, that the house isn't their real home. Oh, wow. It's like a collective descent into delusion. This is where it really starts to feel like a horror movie. Yeah, this is where things get really scary. So what happens? What are the parents doing? They're freaking out, obviously. They're burning incense, performing rituals, praying, but nothing's working. Oh, God. And it's in this chaotic moment that Mr. Wu makes a shocking announcement. He announces that he is the Jade Emperor. Wait, hold on. The Jade Emperor, as in the ruler of heaven in Chinese mythology. The one and only. You've got to be kidding me. And the mom. She's right there with him. She declares herself the Queen Mother of the West. Basically, the Jade Emperor's wife. So both parents are claiming to be these powerful deities. And the sisters, what about them? They each get taken over by different figures, too. The eldest sister, she's still convinced she's the goddess of mercy. The second sister becomes the seventh fairy, and the youngest claims to be the third prince. It's like a whole pantheon in their house. And the son, is he in on this too? Oh, for sure. He declares himself the drunken monk. Okay, but they're all claiming to be good deities, right? Is that a good thing? You would think so, but that's where things take an even darker turn. The family becomes convinced that one of them is actually a demon in disguise. What? They start to believe that this demon is the reason why they're all being possessed in the first place. So the good deities are fighting back against this imposter? That is so messed up. Right. Imagine believing that your own family member is a demon. I can't even imagine. And that belief leads to even more disturbing behavior. Way worse. <laughs> this is where the video gets really hard to watch. They start physically abusing each other, trying to, like, beat the demon out of whoever they suspect at the time. Oh, my God. They're torturing each other. They're slapping each other, hitting each other with broomsticks, burning each other with incense. Because they think they're possessed by a demon. This is horrifying. It gets even worse. They start smearing themselves and the house with excrement because they believe demons are inherently unclean. This is insane. Oh, God, that is just awful. Beating each other, smearing. I mean, what were their neighbors thinking? The neighbors actually ended up calling the police. Really? Yeah, they were totally freaked out by what they were seeing and hearing. I don't blame them. But by the time the police got there, yeah. the woos were gone. They just disappeared. Completely vanished. What? The video says it took three days for them to turn up again. Three days? Where did they go? They ended up in a temple about an hour away. Okay. And this is where it gets really tragic. The eldest daughter, Sister A... She was dead. Oh, my God. That's that's just heartbreaking. What happened? How did she die? The rest of the family, they were covered in bruises, burns, those weird circular marks the video talked about before. Yeah. But here's the thing. They didn't blame the exorcisms or anything like that for her death. No. They were convinced that the demon possessing her was just too powerful, that it stopped her soul from returning to her body. Oh, my God. 
That's it's like their belief, their delusion. It literally cost one of them their life. It's truly tragic. Yeah. So what happened then? Did the police investigate? Oh, absolutely. They started an investigation right away. Okay. But Mr. Wu wouldn't talk to them at all. He was terrified of making the demons angry. And you know, this Wu completely paranoid, convinced everyone was in danger of being possessed. It's just so sad. And the other siblings, what did they have to say? Well, that's actually a really interesting aspect of the case. The psychiatrists who interviewed them individually, they said that none of them showed any typical signs of mental illness on their own. So they weren't actually mentally ill? Not in the traditional sense, no. But together, as a family unit, they fed into this shared delusion. It's like they created their own reality and then it spiraled out of control. Exactly. And tragically, someone lost their life because of it. Did they ever figure out how Sister A actually died? What did the autopsy say? The official cause of death was multiple organ failure. Organ failure. From what? The autopsy showed that she had eaten a lot of feces. And that, combined with the starvation, basically caused her body to shut down. Oh my God, that is just, I can't even wrap my head around that. They were so caught up in this delusion that they literally starved and tortured themselves to death. It's definitely one of the most disturbing aspects of this whole case. Were there any, like, any legal consequences? Was anyone held responsible for Sister A's death? The family was actually initially charged with murder. Murder, wow. But it was later reduced to abandoning a corpse. Abandoning a corpse. But how could they not be held responsible? They were torturing her. It was complicated. They determined that she was a willing participant in the rituals, and the prosecution couldn't prove that she was physically forced into anything. So what happened? Did they go to jail? No. In the end, they didn't serve any jail time. Wow. So no accountability at all? Not legally, no. Uh. But this case, it sparked a huge debate in Taiwan about superstition, about mental health, about the role of these spiritual practitioners, and, you know, just the fine line between what's real and what's in our heads. It makes you wonder, you know, how much of what we believe is shaped by our culture, our families, our fears, what we're willing to accept as truth, even when it's harmful. Exactly. And that's what makes this story in the movie it inspired so powerful. It really gets under your skin and makes you question everything. What do you think? Was this just a family dealing with mental illness? Were they victims of some kind of spiritual scam? Or could there be something more to it that we just don't understand? It's a question that's really stuck with me. The power of belief, family dynamics, the line between reality and delusion. It's a lot to unpack. And I think that's what makes this case and stories like it so fascinating. They remind us that sometimes the scariest monsters are the ones we create ourselves. Oh, 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 oh,